So we're winding to the end now of our equalizer discussion. And the last uh, subject that I want to look at is a nonlinear equalizer. And I won't be going into this in depth, but I just want to give you a pr brief introduction to this other um, way, may, means of equalizing the channel, known as the dis decision feedback equalizer. And careful with the name because we already had data aided and decision directed, and now this is something completely different. Well, not completely different, different somewhat different, the decision feedback. So again, uh, we're introducing feedback, and the word feedback is chosen particularly. We're using decisions, but uh, it's not just in the adaptation. And because of that, uh, the feedback actually is what makes this filter a nonlinear filter. Uh, with the previous example of decision directed, uh, if I put in you know, a linear combination, A plus B, I would still get out a uh, same linear response. This is not the case. It's nonlinear. Uh, in essence, this equalizer sort of has two different filters that are operating inside <coughs> of this uh, total equalizer package, doing two different functions inside of the equalizer. There's an adaptive filter which actually affects the equalization, but then there's a second adaptive filter, and that is being used to recreate the intersymbol interference. We're recreating it so that we can subtract it. So we're trying to adapt the equalizer when there is less distortion because we have removed some of the distortion to make the adaptation uh, better. That's the idea behind a decision uh, feedback equalizer. So again, be uh, careful uh, not to confuse these two ideas of decision directed versus decision feedback. So in the decision directed, the receiver decisions are used for adaptation. It's just being treated as if it was known data, even though it's not known data and there may be errors in it. Uh, the decision feedback instead uses decisions to actually recreate intersymbol interference and to subtract that from the ISI. And there's um, could be added delay depending on the size of the equalizers in the decision feedback. So it sort of introduces another difference between them. Um, so when we do the equalizer adaptation, most of the distortion due to ISI will have been removed. So it's uh, very effective for channels which have a lot of severe distortion because of the ISI. And it's effective even when the channel has frequency nulls. So this is one of the most, uh, uh, the largest uh, motivation for using a decision feedback equalizer is it performs well for these channels which have these uh, frequency nulls. So this is the overall form of the decision feedback equalizer. And we'll start with this section over here, which is called the uh, forward filter. And this is basically the adaptive equalizer. So I have an equalizer filter, and the tap weights, they're being updated continuously. I also have um, a place where the decisions are being made. Just like with the decision directed, I'm going to reuse them, but the way that I reuse them is different in a decision feedback equalizer. And in this case, when I use them, I'm going to have a second filter, and down here is the second filter, which we call the feedback filter. And this is where I'm recreating the ISI. So I take the decision, I say based on what I think is going on in my my um, multipath channel, I'm going to recreate the ISI, and then I'm going to actually subtract it uh, from the received signal in order to do my um, adaptation. So we are using the feedback uh, back in order to do this update of the uh, forward filter or the equalization filter. So let's have a look at these three channels that we looked at earlier and see what kind of performance we would get with a decision feedback equalizer. And we, just to recall, when we used the minimum mean squared error um, equalizer, we got this spread between the performance of these equalizers. And we get a similar spread, at least the order of the performance, uh, when we use uh, the decision feedback equalizer. However, be careful because the scale of the x-axis has changed in these two plots. So actually, this one is doing much better. Because if I look here, this is the 20 to 25 uh, dB 
position, and that would correspond to about here. So here the red curve is getting down to something like 10 to the minus 4, uh, around 20 dB, whereas before, if I wanted to get uh, 10 to the minus 4, I would have had to go all the way out to something like 35 dB. So it's much, much better. They look the same, but the scale has changed. And so the decision feedback equalizer has been very effective uh, in these two channels, which have uh, frequency nulls in the red and in the pink. And again, in the pink, if I was, I, I never even got to 10 to the minus 4 anywhere here, even at 45 uh, dB. But here by 25 dB, I'm already getting below 10 to the minus 4 for the performance. So we can see that the nonlinearity that we're introducing can uh, be a big gain for certain kinds of filters. Of course, for the blue, uh, I'm also getting a bit uh, better performance, but it's not the big improvement. So there's probably no need to go to the nonlinear for a channel like the blue one. It's just as easy to use a linear filter to, I don't need the, the two kinds. And the very last uh, thing that I would like to leave you with is the fact that these uh, decision feedback equalizers can indeed be really simple. So you can take this idea and take it to the extreme where each equalizer is like super small, like a one tap equalizer. And uh, this is known as a um, one tap decision feedback equalizer. And there really isn't an equalizer. <laughs> it's, it's a much simple form. And even in this one, we can get like really good uh, cleaning up of the signal. And so this is an eye diagram. And I'm going to give you a bit airway curve, but if we look at an eye diagram of a signal which has been using a decision feedback equalizer, you can see before this, the feedback occurs, I have a, a very thick um, excursion on the top of the eye. And once I get the feedback signal to it, uh, it's much smaller. So I'm, I'm uh, feeding back uh, what I think is the intersymbol interference and getting rid of it. And then I get something, when I go to sample uh, and actually do my detection, I'm looking at something that's it's much cleaner. So decision feedback equalizer doesn't have to be terribly complex in order to give you some, some nice performance. It all depends on the, the channel. And so this is part of our arsenal of solutions that we can choose from uh, when we want to equalize the channel. And uh, I would, again, encourage you to look at that uh, MATLAB uh, demonstration because it covers all of these different types of equalizers that we've discussed for specific channels and lets you see uh, how they're performing and what the improvement is uh, for each of them. Uh, by the way, there's a website, uh, which is a link here, which shows you uh, this simple uh, decision feedback equalizer if you're curious about it and want to know more about it.